Hello and welcome to Crooked House Gaming. Here at Crooked House Gaming, we like to explore the gameplay of simulation games, usually through a series of Let's Plays. In this episode, we will continue to explore the gameplay of Democracy 4. Democracy 4 is a political sim that lets you choose the role of a world leader and govern a country. If this sounds like something that you'd be interested in, be sure to hit that like button. And if you're new here, welcome. And be sure to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. We are presently playing as the Prime Minister of Canada. We are in the fifth year of our first term. As as Prime Minister of Canada, let's see what happens. The GDP is up, health is up. Corporate medical marketing, there's an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. For many years, certain pharma companies have been giving money and other favors to doctors who prescribe their drugs, even though sometimes these drugs were not needed or not the ideal choice. This has increased in recent months and while no physical harm has been done so far, it is only a question of time until something bad happens. Take no action. This has been going on for many years and nothing happened. Clearly, there is no need to intervene and force regulations upon these companies. After all, the pharma industry is a rich and influential business. If other companies think their product is better, they can do the same. Introduce regulations. This has to stop. The lives of patients are on the line and it is unacceptable for the doctors to prescribe medicines based on their own financial motivation rather than what the patient needs. Regulations need to be put in place to prevent pharma companies influencing doctors in any financial way. We are the Radical Reform Party and I am selecting Introduce Regulations. The capitalists are unhappy at negative 5%, health has gone up plus 3%, retired are happy at plus 5% and private health care is down at negative 8%. Pollution. The environmental experts tell us the country's pollution problem is now under control. Our citizens no longer need to wear face masks when cycling to work. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation gig economy on our hands if we do not act soon budget report there is a budget deficit of 25.2 billion dollars we need to reduce spending or raise taxes polls report the polls are optimistic if an election was held tomorrow we suspect we would get 86 percent of the vote election report our party the radical reform party is getting more support in the last quarter 1,168,979 new people signed up to be members cabinet report the loyalty of our ministers can best be described as supportive. Their effectiveness is generally to be considered adequate. Economic forecast. The global economy is doing okay and we are in neither a boom nor a bust cycle. So let's get into our first term. We have 17 political capital to spend. Let's take a look at our subsidies. I am thinking of doing congestion charging to raise some money for the country. Congestion charging. In many large cities, the number of cars traveling in each day is simply unsustainable. Although a fairly blunt instrument simply charging through number plate recognition, any vehicle that enters the the city each day has proven to be an effective way to reduce congestion in extreme cases. Let's implement this. It is 0% popular with the vote. It will uh, take two terms to implement. If we do it to maximum, the income this will bring in will be $27.51 million. Let's apply the changes. We have six political capital to spend. This would lower food price. City farms. Many people would love to buy fresh produce from farmers directly, but living in the city, this is often a hassle to drive out to the countryside, so why not bring some farmers into the cities directly? This program helps ambitious farmers to establish farms in or around cities so they can be close to their customers and will get some of the city kids to consider a career in farming. Let's implement this. It is 93% popular with the vote. Let us raise this to high and we will apply the changes. We have three political capital remaining. Since we have low productivity and uncompetitive economy, I am going to put some points into adult education subsidies. Adult education subsidies are a way to encourage people to retrain and continue their education after after they have joined the workforce. This includes evening classes and distance learning resources. These schemes help to raise the overall education level of the workforce. This is 50% popular with the vote. I am putting two political capital in this and I am applying the changes. We have one political capital left to spend. Clean air subsidies. Renewable energy might not be ultra efficient yet, but there is an argument for investing heavily in it now so as to strategically prepare our country for a future without fossil fuels. Environmentalists are happy for obvious reasons, but capitalists see this as an unwelcome distortion of the energy market. We are going to use our last political capital and we are going to go to maximum. We will apply the changes. We are at the end of our first term of our fifth year as the Prime Minister of Canada. Let's hit that button. We will now be entering the second term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see how we did. The GDP is up. We have a cluster bomb ban. There is an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. Engineering
engineering company in our country has just won a contract to manufacture and supply cluster bombs to foreign countries. At the moment, there is no specific law that prohibits the company from making these products. But there is widespread public debate that we should ban the production of cluster bombs within our borders. Ban cluster bombs. Cluster bombs cause so many civilian deaths that there is really no way we should condone the manufacture of such weapons. They are cruel weapons and there is no justification for their use today. If banning these weapons costs us a handful of jobs, then that's the price we should be happy to pay. Reject the law. It is very easy to say we should ban the manufacture of cluster bombs. But what next? Stop making guns? Handcuffs? This should be a step towards dismantling our whole arms industry, which could cost jobs and hurt investor confidence. It's not the job of the state to interfere in what products a company manufactures. We are banning cluster bombs because there is no justification for their use today. And we are the radical reform party. The liberals are happy at plus 10%. The GDP goes down 1%. The patriots are unhappy at negative 9%. Campaign speeches are available. The election draws near and you may want to take some time out of government to hold a campaign rally and deliver a speech. Budget report. The government is currently running a budget deficit of $26.84 billion. We should take steps to reduce this. Polls report. The polls are optimistic. If an election was held tomorrow, we suspect we would get 96% of the vote. Cabinet report. The loyalty of your ministers can best be described as supportive. Their effectiveness is generally to be considered adequate. Economic forecast. The global economy is in a recession and it is having a negative effect on our GDP. Let's continue. We have 18 political capital to spend. Ooh, who got happy? Well, it does not look like our ministers are very happy. Especially this law and order minister. He's not very happy at all. Let's do a campaign speech. Okay, so who is not happy with us? Trade unionists are not happy. And the wealthy are not happy. The conservatives are not happy. Well, we could do a speech for the conservatives. And the wealthy are at 39%. Let's give a speech. This is the trade union speech. The conservatives are not happy with this speech. I should fire my speech writer. The trade unionists are happy with us at plus 15%. The self-employed are unhappy at negative 10%. The conservatives are happy at plus 15%. And the liberals' view of us are down at negative 15%. We have nine political capital remaining. Diverted profits tax, a tax levied on estimates regarding large companies' profits earned in this country, regardless of their actual reporting. This is used to prevent multinational companies from claiming that all of their profits they earn are somehow only generated in a tax haven with little or no corporate taxes by using cunning accounting trickery. Tax is mostly designed as an incentive to push such companies to play by the spirit as well as the letter of the law. And while this is only 27% popular with the vote, we need to generate money for this country. I'm going to do it to maximum and we will raise $2.70 billion. Let's apply the changes. We have three political capital left to spend. We could put some points in National Business Council. The establishment of a National Business Council gives a strong voice to business interests and ensures that the needs of business both big and small are taken into account. The council serves as a way to promote capitalism and enterprise and get across the message that the corporate world has much to offer, creates employment and prosperity. We will go all the way to the end and put two political capital in this. We will apply the changes. We have one political capital remaining. We could put our last political capital into needle exchange program. We did have a donor that really liked this and it is 90% popular with the vote and it will probably improve health. Needle exchange program. Drug addiction itself is bad enough already, and dirty or infected needles are an additional danger for drug addicts. To help out, the needle exchange program will help addicts get clean needles for their needs, while also offering to help them get clean and living a normal life again. Conservatives may think of this as enabling, but liberals see this as a good way to fight drug abuse in the long run. We are going to use our last political capital, and we are going to go to high, and we are going to apply the changes. We have zero political capital remaining and thus we are at the end of our second term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's hit that button. We'll be going into our third term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see how we did. GDP is up. Regional war. A war has broken out in a neighboring country causing tension along the border with them. We are seeing an influx of refugees as well as trade being stemmed. There are also concerns that a conflict in such close proximity will reduce the stability of our nation. 
immigration. Immigration is up plus 25%. Uh, Patriot membership is up plus 8%. Business confidence is down at negative 11%. Stability is down at negative 11 And illegal immigration is up at plus 25%. Campaign speeches are available. The election draws near and you may want to take some time out of government to hold a campaign rally and deliver a speech. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Illegal immigration crisis on our hands if we do not act soon. Yeah, that's because of the uh, war. Budget report. The government is currently running a budget deficit of $22.94 billion. We should take steps to reduce this. Polls report. The government is popular among the electorate and we estimate a poll rating of 96%. Election report. The election is drawing near. We currently have 3 million 6,272 members of the Radical Reform Party. Our party membership is the largest by noticeable margin. That is pretty impressive. Cabinet report. The loyalty of our ministers can best be described as supportive. Their effectiveness is generally to be considered adequate. Let us continue. This gentleman is very mad at us. Let's take a look at him. We could kick him out. Yeah, let's fire him. We're looking for a law and order minister that probably aligns with us. Not the motorist and the retired. I think we'll take Teresa Lewis. While well, she's probably going to be angry at us because she's a capitalist and we've been all sorts of crazy. Uh, we're going to hire her anyways. Uh, the effectiveness of our cabinet has dropped a little bit. We have 18 political capital remaining and we are going to do some campaign speeches. Now that speech with the conservatives sort of tanked. The trade unionists are happy. See if anybody is unhappy with us. The wealthy seem a little bit unhappy with us. Conservatives are unhappy with us at 22%. So let's do the conservatives and the wealthy. The wealthy are not happy with this speech. I really have to get a new speech writer. It seems I just cannot win with the conservatives or the wealthy with my speech. The wealthiest view of us is up 10%, the poorest view of us is down 15%, the conservatives view of us is up 10%, and the liberals view of us are down 15%. Let's continue. We have nine political capital remaining. Let's take a look at our refugee policy because we have illegal immigration right now. Most countries accept that they are, have a moral responsibility to take migrants from a disaster zone or war-torn countries, but there is a strong debate on how loose these restrictions and limits should be, especially if climate change and other factors lead to a large rise in global refugees. This is 92% popular with our voters. We right presently are taking them from war zones and disaster. We will use six political capital and it will allow us to accept refugees fleeing persecution. We will apply the changes. We have three political capital remaining. Let's do some more points in adult education subsidies because we have an uncompetitive economy. Adult education subsidies are a way to encourage people to retrain and continue their education after they've joined the workforce. This includes evening classes, distance learning resources. These schemes help to raise the overall education level of your workforce. We will use two political capital in this and we will apply the changes. We have one political capital remaining. We can put our last political capital into free school meals. Not only are free school meals a way to redistribute wealth by ensuring everyone can afford to feed their children, it also is a way to ensure that children eat healthy rather than surviving on purely junk food. Yeah, the parents will be happy with this. It will increase the health of our nation. It will lower poverty a little bit. And it will lower obesity. Let's apply the changes. We have zero political capital remaining. And we are ending the third term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's hit that button. We will now be entering the fourth term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of Canada. Let's see how we did. Unemployment is up. Crime is up. The GDP is up. Freedom of information. There is an urgent policy question that requires your immediate attention. There have been calls for a law to increase the availability of information held on databases about citizens without their knowledge. These include the records held by private medical companies, insurance companies, debt collection agencies, as well as information held by government departments. Reject the proposal. Nobody likes the idea that the government is holding information about them, but in some circumstances, this needs to be done. The government isn't out to spy on everyone, but passing this law will just make it harder for the intelligence services to keep watch on serious criminals and terrorists. It will also affect a large number of businesses who have customer databases, who will be swamped with yet more bureaucracy. Pro's Freedom Act. It's essential that we have this law passed, that it is one of the checks and balances required in 
in a truly free society. The average law-abiding citizen should not be spied on or monitored by multinational corporations with computer databases, and the potential for abuse by government agencies if citizens cannot view what data is being stored is huge. I am going to propose the Freedom Act. The Liberals are happy at plus 10%, the state employees are unhappy at negative 7%, and corruption is down at negative 4%. The illegal immigration crisis. There has been a large rise in the extent of illegal immigration, which may cause concern and social upheaval. Illegal immigration crisis. Even the toughest regime and border controls find it difficult to completely stop all illegal immigration and people smuggling, although that will not stop governments from trying. Undocumented immigrants mean a boost to the population without corresponding rise in tax revenue to pay for any increased pressure on public services. This can cause social unrest and other problems. Manifesto promises are available. We don't need to do manifesto promises. Campaign speeches are available. The election draws near and you may want to take some time out of government to hold a campaign rally and deliver a speech. Situation imminent. Our data is showing that we have a potentially bad situation. Gig economy on our hands if we do not act soon. Budget report. The government is currently running a budget deficit of $21.45 billion. We should take steps to reduce this. Election report. The election is drawing near. We currently have 2,937,099 members of the Radical Reform Party. Our party membership is the largest by a noticeable margin. Cabinet report. The loyalty of your ministers can best be described as supportive. Their effectiveness is generally to be considered adequate. Let us continue. We have 15 political capital to spend. We could institute a border navy to deal with our illegal immigration. Border walls cannot work in an ocean, so the equivalent mean of deterring illegal immigration for islands and nations with an extensive coastline is to invest in patrol boats that intercept and send back any ships carrying illegal immigrants. Let's implement this. So this is 0% popular with the vote, but we do have illegal immigration. Let's raise this to the border of medium and high. Let's apply the changes. We have three political capital remaining. Let's put some points in cyberbullying awareness campaign. A program of adverts on TV, radio, online, and billboards to warn parents and teachers to look out for the signs their children are being bullied online so that the problem can be spotted early and dealt with before it affects the children's mental health. This is 92% popular with the vote. The youth and the parents will love this. Let's implement this. I believe we only have one political capital. Let's go all the way to the end and we'll apply the changes. We have one political capital remaining. We could put some points in Race Discrimination Act. This prevents citizens from being discriminated against purely on the basis of race, i.e. racist employment practices, etc. This is 94% popular with the vote. Let us use our last political capital in this and we will apply the changes. We have zero political capital remaining and thus we are at the end of our fourth term of our fifth year as Prime Minister of Canada. That means we are going to be going into an election. So let's hit that button. Here are the election results. Let's start the count. We have won the majority of the vote. We have won 75% of the vote. The Radical Reform Party has won 57.3% of the vote. The Citizens Alliance has won 18.4% of the vote. The Civil Rights League has won 3% of the vote and 24.1% did not vote. So we have been re-elected as Prime Minister of Canada. I'm going to be ending the episode here. Thank you so much for stopping by our Crooked House. If you like what you saw, be sure to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to follow our future episodes as Prime Minister of Canada. It really helps us out. Have a great week. See you soon.